Hello everyone, welcome back to HM Studio. In today's tutorial, I'll show you how to create a wet asphalt material using V-Ray and 3ds Max. And don't worry if you use Corona Renderer, this tutorial is for you too. I'm starting from the basics, so don't stress about complicated stuff. I'll guide you step by step. Before we dive in, remember to hit that subscribe button so you won't miss our upcoming tutorials. And if you find this video helpful, please give it a thumbs up as well. All right, let's begin. I'm working with this file, the first one in the volume 33 of the Evermotion Arch Exteriors collection. But before I get into making materials, let's get inspired by some reference images. I've picked three, and they show you how the wet asphalt reflects light in different ways. As you can see in these images, when dealing with wet asphalt, it has a remarkable level of reflectivity almost everywhere. Some areas display a glossy shine, while others adopt a more subdued matte appearance. So, to start, let's go ahead and create a V-Ray material, just like this. Then apply the material to your geometry with this button over here. I'm going to run the interactive render so we can see the result as we go. Alright, as you can see in these images, they are all looking pretty dark. So, let's change the diffuse color to almost black. Now we need to make the reflection color completely white and the surface will look completely reflective. Now the most important part in making these type of materials is the reflection glossiness. Basically, as you go lower with the number, the reflections become uh, smoother or we can say the surface gets rougher. And as you go higher, the reflections will be sharper and more mirror-like. But if we look at these references, you can see that we don't have a uniform glossiness all across the board. Some areas are shinier while others are rougher. And to imitate that effect, we need to use some maps for the reflection glossiness to randomize the effect across the surface. All right, so if I add a noise map to the glossiness, you can see that we don't have that uniform glossiness everywhere. It's randomized, right? Some areas are sharp and some are more matte-like finish. Once again, if we check the references, we can find out that it must be way shinier. To do that, we need to brighten up the black color. So basically, black is considered to be zero and white is one. So if I make this black color closer to white, the surface will look more reflective in general. So. As you can see, the surface is looking way shinier while we still have the randomization in it, right? And the next step is to work with the high and low values. Basically, in these references, the border between shinier areas and smooth ones is more refined and we have these almost sharp edges, right? To imitate that, we need to bring the high and low values closer to each other. So we're increasing the contrast between the two colors and as a result, will get some sharper edges. So I'm going with 0.7 for high and 0.4 for low values. And here you can clearly see that we are getting some sharper edges here, right? Okay, if you make them even closer, these edges will get even sharper. And you can use different numbers based on what you're trying to achieve. The next thing we need to work with is the size. I feel these puddles are quite big and to make them smaller, I can basically decrease the size from here. And as a result, we can get smaller puddles. But now the problem is that we have almost the same size puddles everywhere. And we need to randomize it to have like bigger ones here and there to make it look more natural. To do that, we need to add a couple of layers to our glossiness map. And for that, we're going to use a composite map. So let's find it in the list and drop it right in the middle here and use the noise map that we already have as the first layer. Now we need to add another layer and you can do it by clicking on this icon over here. All right, for the second layer, we can use the same noise map as our base and by holding shift and dragging it, you can make a copy. Then let's use it as the second layer and just increase the size up to 75. Now, since we don't have any mask for the second layer, all we can see as the result is the bigger puddles that are generated based on our second layer. 
we cannot see anything from the first layer since it's been covered with the second one, okay? So to fix this issue, we need to generate a mask for the second layer and we're going to use another noise map. This time, we're not going to change the colors, but we need a quite contrasty map and for that, we need to go with closer numbers on the high and low values. Let's use 0.6 for the high and 0.4 for the low. Now we need to adjust the size of this map somewhere in between the other two. So for the first one, we have 25 and the second one is 75. So for this one, I'm going with 40. Actually, let me render this with only the first layer and save it so we could compare the results. Okay, that's good enough. I'm going to save this in the frame buffer, just like this. And let me turn on the second layer and compare them to each other with this A and B option that we have in the frame buffer. So the first render will be the A and will appear on the left and the current render will be the B and will appear on the right side of the line. Now if I scrub the line over the render, you can clearly see the differences that the second layer has made. We had all of these little puddles everywhere and now they're more randomized. Actually, let me go with an even uh, higher number for the second one so the difference is more distinct. Let's go with 150 and also for the mask we need to go with a higher number like 75. Okay, now if you want to randomize it even more, we can easily add another layer of noise on top of these two. So let's make a copy out of the second one and use it as the third layer. And we need to increase the size as well. I'm going with 400. All right, let's add another layer, plug this noise map into it just like this. And we need to make another mask as well. And we can make a copy out of this one and double its size and use it as the mask for the third layer. I think the third one is a bit huge, so let's decrease it down to 250. And also the mask size could be smaller, something like 100. Okay, that's more like it. I think this is pretty cool. Okay, for the next step, we need to add the bump and that will make a huge difference in the end result. If you have a look at the references, uh, you can see that the bump map is only affecting the smoother areas, not the shiny ones. So just like the glossiness map, we need to have a layered bump map. But don't worry, we're going to use everything that we've already made as a mask with a little bit of adjustments. All right, I have already imported two textures in the material editor. The first one is our diffuse map and it looks like this, nothing crazy. So let me just plug it into the diffuse node and let's get on with the bump map. For the bump, I have a normal map and to be able to use these type of bump maps, we always need to use a V-Ray normal map first, right? So let's drop it into the material editor and use the texture as the normal map, okay? Now we can use the whole thing as our bump by plugging it into the bump node. Now let's decrease the bump amount to 10. And yeah, I think it looks cool. But the problem is that we have this bump all across the board. To fix that, let's make a copy out of everything that we've made for the glossiness. Okay, now we need to use this texture as the first layer in our composite map. So let's go ahead and create one. Now for the second layer, we need to use a V-Ray color and we can leave it as this neutral gray as it is. And with this map, we're basically eliminating the first layer. And basically we won't have any bump happening anywhere. So this map will be used for where we have the puddles and we want them to stay reflective. And to mix these two, we can simply use our glossiness map as a mask. But this time we need to make all the maps completely black and white. So let's go ahead and change the color one back to black in each and every noise map that we have here.
All right, perfect. You can already see that we don't have any bump happening in the shinier areas. And that's what we're looking for, right? But I think the bump value can be even lower a bit. Uh, so let's go ahead and decrease it down to five. Let me just render this little region so we get a faster result. Okay, the next thing that I think can be better is the size of the texture itself. I think it can be a bit smaller. Now, if I go to this texture, the size is 150 by 150, and I think 100 can work better. And I also need to do the same adjustments for the diffuse texture as well. If you're not using the real world scale, you can basically adjust uh, this stuff with a UVW map modifier, and it's gonna be really easy. All right, actually, let me decrease the blur value for the bomb texture as well. So we get a bit of a sharper bumps. Okay, I think it looks pretty cool. And that's it. If you want to have this material, you can get it from my website and the link will be in the descriptions down below. I have all the other tutorials on the website as well and you can check it out and you might find some other useful things uh, over there that could be helpful to you. Thank you for watching the whole video. Give it a thumbs up if you liked it and don't forget to subscribe so you don't miss my next one. Be safe and I'll see you soon.